There are thousands of campers, trailers, and mobile homes throughout the Bakken region. Fifteen of them were wiped out last night. Good evening. I'm Monica Hannon. And I'm Alan Miller. Thanks for joining us. The first tornado of the season destroyed all of the temporary housing in Raleigh's RV Park, south of Watford City. But had it happened last month, the damage could have been a whole lot worse. Cliff Naylor joins us from the site of the destruction. Cliff? Monica and Allen, a few weeks ago, twice as many homes were located in the man camp located behind me. Miraculously, no one was killed when a tornado touched down on the homes that were parked there yesterday evening. The residents of what was once a small community of oil field workers, people who have lost everything but their lives, sat impatiently in trucks outside Raleigh's RV park waiting for a chance to pick up the pieces of what remained of their homes. The trailer's gone, everything's gone. There's no remnants of there ever being a trailer there. Allie Dickinson is due to deliver her first child in just a few days. But now, she doesn't have a home to bring the baby to. We had our crib and um, all of our nurseries set up and everything perfect in the camper, ready to go for, you know, my due date, June 1st. and. Uh, all my baby stuff's destroyed. We can't find our cats. We had three cats and they're gone. Allie and her husband were eating dinner in a restaurant when the storm hit. The trailer court a hundred yards to the south and another man camp a mile north sustained no damage at all. Mike Williams and lots of other folks in the neighborhood to the north took videos like this one of the funnel cloud touching down before they ran for what little cover was available. We thought there was a concrete tank back there. It ended up being styrofoam. So that didn't really work out so well for us. So we actually got into an excavator bucket up there. And that was the best thing we could find to get in. Thousands of North Dakota's oil field employees live in temporary housing. McKenzie County alone has more than 50 man camps, ranging in size from a couple dozen trailers to large corporate facilities with over 200 living spaces. Most don't have anywhere residents can go to seek shelter from a storm. We have people living out uh, basically in the prairies. McKenzie uh, County so Emergency Manager Jerry away. Samuelson says many man camps also don't have warning systems. The Memorial Day storm evolved from a severe thunderstorm into a full-blown tornado in less than 10 minutes, leaving the residents of this RV park nowhere to go. Now, thanks to Monday's tornado, they won't have anywhere to live for quite a while. Near a Red Cross emergency shelter has been set up at the Watford City Civic Center, and it will remain open until all victims of the tornado last night have found alternative housing. Monica and Allen. All right. Well, thanks a lot, Cliff. Tragic events often create silver linings. The F2 tornado that totally destroyed a man camp near Watford City two weeks ago is a good example of that. Dozens of ordinary people are stepping forward to support one tiny and very vulnerable victim of that disaster. Cliff Naylor has the story. Allie Dickinson was homeless on Memorial Day. She and her husband Derek lost three cats and everything they owned when a funnel cloud touched down in the middle of their trailer court. The trailer's gone, everything's gone. There's no remnants of there ever being a trailer there. She says people who were in the man camp when the storm hit saw her home being swept up into the clouds. Look at that. We walked away with our lives because we went to go eat. Um, a couple of people that, that stayed through the tornado said that our house had actually gone up in the spiral. So ours was in pieces strewn all across the, the lot. Now two weeks after the storm, Allie has given birth to a son and is giving thanks to all the people who offered her a helping hand. I've uh, gotten donations from uh, Wiggles and Giggles Daycare has donated a lot to us. Um, baby clothes and toys and storage boxes. Logan Dickinson was born June 5th and is well taken care of. We've got more than we need, so I'm giving what's left to the, what, what's left that everybody has donated that I don't need. I'm going to give it to Box It Up Watford also to help the rest of the tornado victims. Allie and her family are currently living in a one-room temporary shelter, but consider themselves some of the luckiest people in the world thanks to the generosity of strangers. I just really wanted to thank everybody that reached out and to help us when 
when it was our time of need and I'll definitely, you know, take from this experience and make sure that I give back, you know, and and spread the kindness and pay it forward. A Memorial Day tornado, a twist of fate, and random people rising to the occasion made little Logan Dickinson's entrance into the world a dramatic and heartwarming story. In Dickinson, Cliff Naylor, NBC, North Dakota News. Good story, but the story gets even better. After Logan is eight weeks old, Allie has the opportunity to work at Wiggles and Giggles Daycare and stay close to her firstborn child and the people who reached out. To